Hi, this is Dr. V. Din, and I'm going to be talking to you about AAA screening or abdominal aortic aneurysm screening in your family medicine rotation. Um, I also want to um, give acknowledgement to student Dr. Josh McCoy for coming up with many of these slides. So, uh, statistically speaking, um, a, a triple A's account for four to five percent of sudden deaths. They are the thirteenth most common cause of death um, in the elderly population, and the prevalence is about forty-nine percent of uh, patients over sixty years old. The overall mortality is very high; it can approach um, uh, over eighty percent, um, and many patients die before hospitalizations. If a uh, AAA ruptures outside of the hospital, the mortality is actually 90% or greater. Um, in the classic triad that we're taught of pain, hypotension, and a pulsatile mass is present in less than 50% of cases. Um, and since AAAs have a vague, uh, patients with AAAs have vague abdominal symptoms and back pain, um, many of them are actually misdiagnosed initially. A good example is uh, Albert Einstein, who was uh, diagnosed with cholelithiasis and cholecystitis um, throughout his uh, uh, lifetime, uh, especially when he was in his older age. And uh, when a surgeon went in and took a look, he actually found that uh, Albert Einstein had a large AAA, and he eventually died from a ruptured AAA and they found that his gallbladder was normal. So the methods for detection, there's three ways you can do by physical exam, and as you can see, the sensitivity is fairly low and is even lower in ob obese patients uh, because you can't palpate the, the abdominal aorta. Uh, ultrasound is very sensitive and very specific, and the negative predictive value approaches uh, about 100%. The advantages are it's low cost, it's non-invasive, there's no radiation involved, um, and the gold standard is still going to be a CT scan. It's better than ultrasound, especially for looking at ruptured AAA as well as for dissections. However, they are expensive. Um, uh, there's significant radiation exposures or, and IV contrast, which can uh, lead to acute kidney injury. Uh, the United States Preventive Services Task Force recommends that um, all men ages 65 to 75 years or greater who have ever smoked should really receive at least a one-time uh, AAA screening with ultrasound. Um, and that also uh, leads to earlier detection and more uh, early surgeries and eventually decrease AAA ruptures because of the early recognition. So what's the definition of a AAA? It's basically having a abdominal aortic aneurysm that's greater or equal than three centimeters. And if it's between three and four centimeters, the patient should have an annual follow-up exam. If it's between four and 4.5 centimeters, they should be follow-up every six months or so for serial ultrasounds or CT scans. And if it's greater than 4.5, um, usually they need urgent referral to vascular surgery. And if it's bigger than 5.5, usually they need immediate surgery, um, especially if they have any symptoms. And as you can see, the mortality starts to increase as well as the rupture risk um, as the size of the AAA gets larger. There is a study that was performed in the family medicine uh, office-based uh, screening exam, and they looked at point of care ultrasounds looking at uh, detecting triple A's versus formal ultrasounds, and they found that um, it took about 212 seconds to perform a scan, which is about three and a half minutes, and the office-based ultrasound scan had a sensitivity and specificity that uh, reached almost uh, about 100% when you compare it to formal scans, and they concluded that it can be safely performed efficiently um, and within the time frames of the busy family medicine clinics. So how to perform the scan? The two questions you're going to ask are, uh, is the abdominal aorta greater than 3 centimeters in diameter, and are the iliac arteries greater than 1.5 centimeters in diameter? And, how, and you're going to be forming five views, which we'll go over, and the transverse views of the proximal, mid, and distal aortas. You're going to look for the transverse view of where the distal aorta bifurcates into the iliac arteries. And lastly, you want to get one longitudinal view of the aorta. And remember to save and correctly label the images because a lot of times it's hard to tell which area you're in unless you label your images. So when you're performing the scan, you want to use a curvilinear probe as shown there or a phase array probe if you don't have access to a curvilinear probe. And you want to start like this um, 
image shows, you want to start right at the sub xiphoid area, and the indicator is going to be towards the patient's right side. So the first thing you're going to identify is the aorta in transverse view, the proximal aorta, and the key structure you're going to see are the liver, spine, aorta, IVC, and celiac artery. And as you'll notice here, as we scan through, um, the first thing you really want to see is that liver because that serves as an acoustic window so you can see your aorta, this is your descending aorta here, as well as your spine shadow. And the abdominal aorta will be between your liver and your spine. And your IVC is going to be towards the left of the screen. Let me go through that again. So here you can see that, once again, liver, aorta here. And if you look closely, you can actually see right there is where the aorta um, branches off into the celiac artery as well as the hepatic artery and the splenic artery. And this is sometimes called a seagull sign because it looks like a seagull as a, as a celiac artery branches off in those two other arteries. And here's what it looks like on a static image where you have the aorta, celiac artery, seagull sign coming becoming the hepatic artery, the splenic artery, and here's your IVC here. Um, as you come down a little bit further, this is still part of the proximal view of the aorta, but once again, you're going to look for the liver and the spine here. Here's the spine, and here's the shadowing of the spine. And here's your uh, abdominal aorta, descending aorta. Another structure you'll notice right above that is this anechoic round structure here. That's your SMA, your superior mesenteric artery. And above that, it's going to be your splenic vein. And um, here's your IVC, and you're going to see the left renal vein draining to the IVC as well as the pancreas that envelopes that splenic vein. So here you'll see that in real time here. Okay, here's your descending aorta, SMA. You'll see a little bit of that left renal artery coming into the IVC, splenic vein coming, or sorry, um, left renal vein coming to the IVC, and that splenic vein going across that SMA. As you start going a little bit more distal, you're going to hit the mid aorta. And this is probably the hardest portion to view for the abdominal aorta since there's so much colon anterior to that, transverse colon anterior to the, to the uh, descending aorta. So what you really want to do is apply pressure and you're going to decrease your depth a little bit because as you scan more distal in the aorta, you're going to notice that it becomes more superficial. You see here, it's about six, seven centimeters. Um, and you'll see when you get to the distal aorta, it's going to be even more shallow than that, about two to three centimeters. So here you see that there's a lot of bowel gas right up here and I apply pressure and that really brings out that abdominal aorta. But here you see all that bowel here and once you apply pressure that abdominal aorta starts to uh, be able to be visualized right here. Okay, and once again the spine is here. Um, and as you go more distal, so here's your third view, this is the transverse view of the distal aorta and here you see it's really superficial this is only about two to three centimeters here you can see this is a distal aorta here here's your spine shadow and once you're scanning you can actually see it bifurcate into the right and left iliac arteries so here's a distal aorta bifurcation into your iliac arteries there making sure that the iliac arteries are less than 1.5 centimeters and the last view that you're going to get is the longitudinal view of the abdominal aorta. And you can do that by, we're going to start the video from the beginning again, but you're going to be going from a short axis, so this is actually a short axis of the abdominal aorta, and you're going to center it, and then turn 90 degrees clockwise, and you see how it's a circle right here, right? And as we turn 90 degrees clockwise, here, see now it becomes, you can start seeing it in its long axis over here right there. And you can start seeing parts of the SMA over here and you should be able to see a little bit of celiac artery as it goes anteriorly. There, so you see SMA here and celiac artery as it goes anteriorly. So play that again. SMA, celiac artery right here. And when you're measuring, make sure you measure the abdominal aorta from outer to outer just to make sure that you're including any um, 
thrombus um, or anything else that can enlarge the aorta. So here's another view of the long axis view of the aorta. You see the aorta and the SMA coming inferiorly and the celiac artery usually going either directly anteriorly or sometimes uh, superiorly. So remember the normal diameter is going to be less than one, less than three centimeters. And the emergency situation is when it gets above uh, 5.5 centimeters. And everything else in between uh, 3 centimeters and 5.5 centimeters uh, really depends on the patient's symptoms or vital signs um, and whether how fast the, the AAA is enlarging. So here's an example of a patient with a uh, AAA. And as you can see, these are centimeter markings over here. This is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 centimeters centimeters uh, excuse me sorry this is one two three four five centimeters here and you can see that this is very large it's definitely more than three centimeters and there's a mural thrombus right here this is a transverse view okay um, and when you turn it to long axis view you can see it's like a focal area of outpouching of that abdominal aorta and you can see if you only scan maybe around here you might have missed that AAA, but once you scan more distally, you see, and in the long, long axis view, you see this, um, this large uh, focal uh, AAA. So here's some scanning tips um, as we summarize. Uh, bowel gas in the way, apply pressure with the probe, um, and you can encourage uh, peristalsis. Uh, sometimes you have to try to go from different angles to try to avoid that bowel. Um, sometimes you can roll a patient to the left side and use the liver as acoustic window to bring that liver over that aorta. Um, just to note, um, it's easy to get a falsely small diameter or miss a sacular diameter, so make sure you visualize the entire aorta, especially in the long axis where you can uh, sometimes underestimate the, uh, the, the abdominal aorta. All right, thank you, and hopefully you guys have a good time scanning in the family medicine patient outpatient clinic.